Meet Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai. He's known for his incredible wealth, but what truly sets him apart is his humble nature and his dedication to his family. Despite his riches, he's down to earth and always puts his loved ones first. Sheikh Hamdan grew up among his people, understanding their needs and desires. He comes from a large family, being the fourth child among his 11 siblings. However, tragedy struck in 2015 when his oldest brother, Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed, passed away suddenly from a heart attack. This loss deeply affected the entire family, but they came together to support each other through the tough times. Even before becoming the crown prince, Sheikh Hamdan showed qualities of leadership and compassion. Recognized by royals and dignitaries alike for his intelligence and diplomacy, he was eventually appointed as the crown prince of Dubai by his father in 2008. Prior to this, he had served as the deputy ruler of Dubai for two years, gaining valuable experience in governance. While Sheikh Sheikh Hamdan inherited considerable wealth as part of his royal lineage, he has never let it go to his head. Unlike some other royals who flaunt their riches, he remains grounded and responsible with his money. Instead of extravagance, he chooses to use his wealth for charitable purposes and to support his family. But perhaps his greatest wealth lies in his relationships with his family. He cherishes his role as a father, son, husband and brother above all else. Every day, he strives to be the best version of himself for his loved ones, embodying the true spirit of nobility and compassion. Every day, the Crown Prince of Dubai faces a mountain of tasks, but amidst the chaos, he makes it a priority to carve out quality time for his family. Despite his packed schedule, he believes that spending time with his loved ones is essential for his well-being. Whether it's a quiet evening at home or a joyous celebration like birthdays or aid festivals, he ensures he's there with his nieces and nephews, making cherished memories together. With a massive following on Instagram, the Crown Prince shares glimpses of his family life with his Instafam. During festive seasons, his feed lights up with heartwarming pictures of him, surrounded by his adorable nieces and nephews. Through these posts, he not only showcases his priorities, but also encourages others to cherish their family bonds. In 2019, the Crown Prince took a significant step in his personal life by marrying his cousin Sheikha Shaika bin Said bin Tani al Maktoum. Their wedding, along with those of his brothers Maktoum and Ahmad, was a grand affair celebrated at the Dubai World Trade Center. The event drew royals and dignitaries from around the globe, highlighting the importance of family in his life. Two years later, on May 21, 2021, the Crown Prince and his wife welcomed twins into their family, a boy named Rashid and a girl named Shaika. The internet buzzed with excitement as the world caught a glimpse of the proud father holding his newborns. With speculation about their future as potential rulers of Dubai, the joy of parenthood was evident in every picture. When he's not occupied with royal duties or traveling, the Crown Prince dedicates himself to caring for his wife and children. Ensuring their every need is met, he cherishes cherishes every moment spent with his little ones. His commitment to fatherhood has earned him admiration as an ideal role model, inspiring many with his genuine love and devotion to his family. The Crown Prince of Dubai seems to effortlessly juggle his responsibilities as a ruler, a family man, and a passionate traveler, photographer, and poet. However, amidst his many achievements, there have been unfounded rumors circulating about his marriage, causing unnecessary speculation and gossip. Shortly after his marriage in 2019, tabloids claimed that the the couple was headed for divorce, citing alleged fights and a hefty settlement. However, these rumors were quickly debunked by reliable sources, confirming that the Crown Prince and his wife are happily married, providing a loving environment for their children to grow up in. While the Crown Prince frequently travels to various destinations, it's challenging to bring along his young children and wife on long flights. Although he may occasionally take his wife on trips, he keeps their travel plans private to respect their privacy. As his children grow older, he plans to involve them in his adventures, sharing his passion for skydiving, scuba diving, and equestrian sports. Education holds great importance for the Crown Prince, who understands its role in shaping future leaders. Having graduated from esteemed institutions like the London School of Economics, he values education for his children, who may one day take on leadership roles in the country. Despite their high-profile status, the Crown Prince and his wife prioritize privacy, keeping their marriage out of the public 
eye to avoid unnecessary scrutiny and safeguard their family's well-being. While the couple may not share much on social media about their relationship, they are often seen attending events together, enjoying each other's company. Blessed with a talented father and a strong marriage, the Crown Prince and his wife may consider expanding their family in the future, further solidifying their bond and bringing more joy into their lives. As they continue their journey together, their love and commitment to each other shine through, inspiring admiration from those around them. Did Fazer really reunite with his wife, or is it just rumors? Watch till the end to find out. Welcome back to our channel, where we bring you the latest updates on Sheikh Hamdan and his family. If you're curious about the extraordinary life of Sheikh Hamdan, you're in the right place. Everyone, how are you? Hello and thank you for visiting our channel, where we provide you with the most recent information regarding Sheikh Hamdan and his family. As the family gets back together in Dubai, the story takes an exciting new turn at this point. Let's get into the specifics of the situation. On the 13th of December in the year 2023, Sheikh Hamdan and his twin children arrived back in Dubai, marking the beginning of a new chapter. They had no idea that pleasant experiences were waiting for them in the future. Moving forward in time to the 15th of December, Hadiya Zen arrives at her mansion in Dubai, thereby establishing the tone for what is to come. Sheikh Hamdan, on the other hand, was confronted with a predicament when he was required to take his third child, Mohammed, for a stroll. Through his Instagram account on December December 15th, Sheikh Hamdan provided a glimpse of his day, despite the fact that he had a very busy itinerary. First, let's have a look at these photographs that will warm your heart. During their stroll, Sheikh Hamdan can be seen here, savoring precious moments with Mohammed, who is a young child. Clearly, spending time with one's family is one of the most important things for the royal family. The visit to Hadiya Zen's mansion took place on the evening of December 16th, and Sheikh Hamdan joined the twins on their excursion. Hadiya had a surprise in store for them that would warm their hearts, but they were completely unaware of it. The reunion party that Hadiya Zen planned and executed was a beautiful event that included home-cooked dishes. Sheikh Hamdan and the twins were in for a real treat when they were served a delectable meal that had been planned by Hadiya Zen from the very beginning. These moments exude the warmth that comes from the presence of family relationships. The party was a wonderful experience for the twins who stayed with Hadiya throughout the festivities. These moments caught the happiness and harmony that existed within in the family, demonstrating the love that they have for one another. As the night came to a close, Sheikh Hamdan said his goodbyes to Hadiya and the twins before making his way back to his palace. Everyone left the family reunion feeling happy and connected to one another. It was an experience that will be remembered for a long time. The most recent information regarding Sheikh Hamdan and his family is presented here for your perusal. I sincerely hope that you found these observations to be both fascinating and uplifting. If you got something out of this video, make sure to press the bell icon down below and subscribe to our channel so that you can remain up to speed on everything that has to do with Sheikh Hamdan. I'm grateful that you watched and until we meet again, I hope you stay safe. The most uh, important question for us uh, right now is uh, how come you're still uh, single? Well, uh... The lifestyles of Arab sheikhs are characterized by unprecedented riches and opulence. If you watch this movie, I will explain to you how the wealthiest and most powerful Arab princes spend their lives. In addition to Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Hamdan is also the Crown Prince of Dubai. Whoever has the most money, who owns the most opulent palace, and who has the largest yacht, is going to be compared. Which one of them has the most fascinating way of life and spends money in an extravagant manner? In addition to having the most attractive wife, who is the most influential person in the political world? At the conclusion of the video, we shall determine who emerged victorious from this intense conflict. So sit back, relax, let's get started. This is the first round, political influence. He is commonly referred to as MBS. In terms of his family tree, he is the seventh son of King Salman bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia. As well as serving as the country's Minister of Defense and Deputy Prime Minister, Mohammed is also the country's Crown Prince. In addition to that, he serves as the head of the Council of Political and Security Affairs, as well as the Chairman of the Council of Economic and Development Affairs. It is generally agreed that Mohammed bin Salman is the de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia and that he controls the government formed by his father. On the other hand, Sheikh Hamdan, the Crown Prince of Dubai, is 39 years old. Faza is the name that most people call him. Sheikh Mohammed, the ruler of Dubai, is his father's third son. He is the first son. 
Currently, he serves as the chairman of the Executive Council of Dubai in the Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid establishment, which is a program for young business people, Hamdan serves as the president. This is due to the fact that his father, Sheikh Mohammed, holds all of the power in Dubai. And despite the fact that he is the future ruler of Dubai, he does not have any influence in the country at the time. Saudi Prince Mohammed is more powerful than his opponent, which is why he prevails in this round. This is the second round, Abundance. It has been reported by a number of web resources that Prince Hamdan possesses a net worth of $6 billion. The vast majority of that wealth was bestowed upon him by his royal family in the form of an unexpected inheritance. Within the Middle Eastern region, Dubai is considered to be one of the wealthiest emirates. The wealth of Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, is far more. It is believed that he has a net worth of approximately $18 billion. This is the reason why he also wins this round. It's the third round. Education. The Honorable Prince Mohammed graduated from King Saud University with a bachelor's degree in law. On the other hand, Prince Hamdan has a far higher level of education. His education included graduation from the Dubai School of Government as well as Rashid School for Boys in Dubai. He completed his education in the United Kingdom, where he received his diploma from Sandhurst and went on to study economics at the London School of Economics. Because of my studies in Dubai, which I had previously completed in the United Kingdom, I was able to see a whole new universe of opportunities. According to Faza, education, knowledge and understanding give you the ability to look beyond the present world and into new horizons. Prince Hamdan emerges victorious in this round this is the fourth round, real property. Luxurious palaces are a favorite of every Arab sheikh. In most cases, they are joint owners of multiple mansions. Sheikh Mohammed's family has a significant number of private properties in the royal family. The Za'abil Palace, which serves as their primary house, can be found in Dubai. It is not true that Prince Fadza resides at Za'abil Palace with his father. Rather, he resides in his very own private palace in Nad al Sheba which is a very good new and upscale neighborhood in Dubai. It is located not too far from Za'abil Place and is in close proximity to the Maidan racetrack. Due to the fact that the prince chooses to keep his life private, we are not aware of the specifics contained within this palace. No one has any doubts about the wonderfulness of his palace. The official residence of Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman is located in Riyadh and it is known as the Palace of Yamama. The floors are built of Italian marble, and the ceiling and panels are beautifully carved, which contributes to the dramatic atmosphere. This is the location where the government meets once a week, and it is also where international delegations are welcomed to attend. Within the city of Riyadh, the Saudi royal family also has al Auja Palace and Erga Palace. Nevertheless, the most magnificent palaces may be found in France, not too far from the capital city of Paris. The French King Louis XIV is honored with the naming of this beautiful house. And this is without a doubt, one of the most priced private residences in the entire globe. The price tag is close to $300 million. This magnificent palace was created in the form of a traditional French noble home. The Saudi prince emerges victorious in this round since it is rare to find real estate that is more luxurious or expensive. This is the fifth round. There are yachts. Assuming the role of an Arab royal is impossible if one does not possess a massive luxury yacht. However, which of the princes possesses a yacht that is both larger and more expensive? Dubawi is the name of Sheikh Hamdan's enormous boat, which has a starting price of $35 million. It is longer than 90 meters, which is more than 297 feet. A total of 22 staterooms, a nightclub, a guest lounge, two salons, an elevator, a fountain, a swimming platform, a hospital room, a jacuzzi, and a private owner's deck are all accommodations that are included aboard the enormous vessel. On the other hand, Sheikh Hamdan only recently put this yacht up for sale. Additionally, he is the owner of one of the largest yachts in the world, which is 141 meters in length and has the capability of accommodating 60 guests and 56 crew members in a comfortable manner. It referred to Yas. At a price of close to $180 million, 
several swimming pools, a spa, a helipad, a beach club, and a lounge bar are all included in its amenities. Most importantly, however, Sheikh Hamdan is a huge fan of his boat, Smeralda. In terms of length, it is a motor yacht that measures 77 meters. It has the capacity to cater to a workforce of 24 people and 12 guests. The price tag is $75 million, and Saidi Prince Mohammed bin Salman is also the owner of a private super yacht that is among the largest luxury vessels in the world. The length of the Serene extends to 133 meters, and it has the capability of accommodating 24 guests in addition to 52 crew members. The yacht has a price tag of $500 million. This is a considerably larger amount than all of Hamdan's vessels combined. Because of this, Mohammed emerges victorious in this conflict. This is the sixth round. Car Collection Mohammed bin Salman has a penchant for pricey and luxurious automobiles. His collection of automobiles includes numerous high-end automobiles, including Rolls-Royce, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Bentley, and Ferrari, among others. A collection of high-end automobiles can be found in the garage of Sheikh Hamdan. In addition to that, he possesses an incredible amount of golden automobiles, such as a Lamborghini and a Range Rover, in addition to a Bentley Bentayga and a whole fleet of Rolls-Royce automobiles. A substantial number of automobiles are owned by both Sheikhs. The winner is difficult to predict. It appears that there is no victor in this round. This is the seventh round, a pastime. According to statements made by Muhammad bin Salman, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, during an interview, he enjoys participating in sports on the weekends. First and foremost, he enjoys basketball since it is a risk-free sport. Sheikh is not a fan of extremely dangerous sports, and it's such a dull one. Prince Hamdan, on the other hand, leads a lifestyle that is significantly more intriguing than his. There is a lot of bustle in Faza. Skydiving, hiking, skiing, freediving, deep-sea fishing, falconry, and other types of adventures are some of his favorite things to do. Photographs of Hamdan exercising out are frequently posted on his Instagram account. These photographs may show him in a gym, riding, or even on an obstacle course. He also has a genuine affection for animals. Sheikh is not afraid of lions, camels, or horses. Poems written in Arabic by Hamdan are renowned for their romantic and patriotic themes. In this particular bout, the Crown Prince of Dubai is without a doubt the victor. This is the eighth round. Personal life and activities. The marriage between Prince Hamdan and his cousin Sheikha Sheikha bint Said took place three years ago. The news that Faza had given birth to twins, a son named Rashid and a daughter named Sheikha, was publicized the previous year. There is no one who is aware of the appearance of the prince's wife. There are only photographs of her childhood that may be seen on the internet. 14 years ago, Mohammed bin Salman tied the knot with Sara bint Mashur, who was his first cousin. The couple has five children. When it comes to his private life, however, we have very little information. His wife does not make any public appearances. Just a few of her older photographs are available here. As far as rumors are concerned, this family does not have everything under control. The reason for this is because the Sheik has a ridiculous personality and has the potential to spark scandals. A true family man, Prince Hamdan is a family man. The fact that he posts images of himself with his family members on a regular basis is not a secret. He loves them very much. Consequently, Hamdan emerges victorious in this particular round. This is the ninth round, its widespread appeal. The Prince Hamdan has an active presence on several social media platforms. There are more than 14 million people that follow him on Instagram. Prince Mohammed is also active on social networks and is eager to give interviews to journalists. Nevertheless, he does not have a particularly huge audience on social networks. Prince Hamdan emerges victorious in this particular round. Let's summarize everything. The total amount of points scored by both sheikhs was the same. It's difficult to determine who is superior. Who do you believe will emerge victorious from this conflict? Who is your favorite among the group? Please do not forget to get in touch with me and express your ideas. You are very much appreciated for watching. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy it. 
Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai, was born on November 14, 1982. He is the second son of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who is the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and the ruler of Dubai, and Sheikh Ahind bint Maktoum bin Juma from the Al Bufalasa tribe of the Bani Yas comes Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed, who is a descendant of the clan, the Prince of Dubai, His Highness, the Crown Prince Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has already made a name for himself as a respected and influential leader. There is no doubt that he possesses a substantial amount of leadership traits, which are flavored with the virtues of modesty, simplicity, and charity. When it comes to this particular element, Sheikh Hamdan is following in the footsteps of his father, His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He is always eager to meet individuals without any constraints or boundaries, and he is always eager of doing so. He never stops working to find solutions to their issues and to follow up on their concerns. Concerns. He is present with them in their happiness and sadness. Despite the fact that he has a lot of severe tasks, the sight of Sheikh Hamdan driving his automobile through the streets of Dubai, eating in restaurants or engaging in conversation with individuals is something that occurs fairly frequently. There are a number of elements that have had an impact on Sheikh Hamdan which have contributed to the formation of his personality and the refinement of his vision. In Sandhurst, he was exposed to a military lifestyle that instilled in him discipline and timeliness. In reference to this event, he stated, The values of discipline, responsibility, and commitment are at the center of what you learn in prestigious military academies such as Sandhurst. When it comes to carrying out your tasks in an effective manner, these values are essentially indispensable. In addition, Sheikh Hamdan has developed attributes of patience and perseverance as a result of his participation in a variety of sports, particularly those that involve horses. Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum was born and raised during a time when the United Arab Emirates was making rapid progress on the path of rapid development and growth. He received his education during this time period. He lived through and was a part of the experiences that led to the country's achievements in terms of both quality and quantity. Since his early days, he was continuously in close proximity to the decision-making centers of Dubai and the United Arab Emirates, which allowed him to obtain excellent expertise in a variety of fields. A descendant of His Highness, the late Sheikh Rashid bin Saeed Al Maktoum, the man who established the modern city of Dubai, Sheikh Hamdan is a well-known figure. He is the son of His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, as well as the ruler of Dubai. He is a visionary and a leader who has established Dubai in the international community as the brightest rising star and a leading global business hub. In addition, he has made invaluable contributions to the spectacular development boom of the United United Arab Emirates under the wise leadership of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the President of the United Arab Emirates, H. H. Sheikh Mohammed, appointed Sheikh Hamdan to the position of Chairman of the Dubai Executive Council on September 8, 2006. The Dubai Executive Council is a government body that is responsible for creating and executing Dubai's strategic comprehensive development plans. As a result of his leadership, the Executive Council has been able to fulfill a number of significant goals which have contributed to the growth of Dubai and highlighted the city's position as a developing international hub for business, commerce, tourism and logistics. Since he became the Crown Prince of Dubai on February 1, 2008, Sheikh Hamdan's responsibilities have grown and developed during the course of his tenure in that role. After taking responsibility for the most important files in the Emirate, he has been playing a significant part in recognizing and putting into action the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid ever since that time. Throughout the years, the Crown Prince of Dubai has maintained a close working relationship with his father, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. He has gained knowledge from his father about the qualities of visionary leadership and strategic perspective, and he has also adopted the personality traits that have established His Highness Sheikh Mohammed as a one-of-a-kind world statesman with unrivaled accomplishments. Sheikh Hamdan built on his theoretical education by acquiring the practical skills of leadership and public administration from his father, H.H. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. This occurred after Sheikh Hamdan graduated from the world-renowned Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in the United Kingdom. 
in the year 2001. Additionally, Sheikh Hamdan attended several specialized training courses in economy from the London School of Economics and Dubai School of Government, beginning with the time when his father was the Crown Prince of Dubai and continuing up to the present day, Sheikh Hamdan has been able to observe his father putting his ambitious vision for development into action. For as long as he can remember, he has been eager to learn from his father's court, which is known as a majlis. He continues to be HH, Sheikh Mohammed's constant companion both inside and outside of the country, which helps him refine and polish his talents and skills even more. The responsibilities and obligations of Sheikh Hamdan increased after HH. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum assumed his dual role as the ruler of Dubai and the vice president and prime minister of the United Arab Emirates in the year 2006. His father gradually added more responsibilities and chores to his son's list of responsibilities, and he included him in the decision-making process on a consistent basis. It is His Majesty in Dubai Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum became the Crown Prince on February 1, 2008, after having previously held the position. He has taken command of the most most important portfolios in the Emirate, which has allowed him to become more inclusive in the process of achieving Sheikh Mohammed's vision. As time has progressed, His Majesty has the Crown Prince of Dubai, Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, continued to work closely with his father, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Through this close relationship, Hamdan bin Mohammed was able to acquire the qualities of a leader as well as his father's strategic vision. Additionally, Hamdan bin Mohammed was able to acquire a great deal of capabilities and leadership qualities which established him as a potential future leader. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid, the Crown Prince of Dubai, has garnered a stellar reputation for his compositions of Nabati poetry under the pen name Faza. The term Faza refers to a person who is quick to offer assistance and support to others in the Emirati dialect. It was the setting in which Sheikh Hamdan was brought up that played a significant influence in training his senses to recognize the boundless beauty that the desert has to give as an everlasting witness to the magnificence of the Creator. For Sheikh Hamdan, this atmosphere of harmony was important in shaping and honing the poet that he was. The opportunity to become acquainted with a large number of poets has been made available to Faza, whose father, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, is highly regarded as a Nabati poet in his own right. Faza received encouragement from Sheikh Mohammed, who also supported him by listening to his initial attempts at writing poetry and guiding him with his experience and his refined appreciation of art. Sheikh Hamdan considers poetry, also known as Faza, to be an example of character expression. The following is a description of poetry that he has provided for himself, my identity and poetic character through which I humbly attempt to rekindle joy in the hearts of people, alleviate their suffering in my own simple way. All of their hopes and dreams are communicated to me. Sheikh Hamdan was brought up in a household that places a great importance on equestrian sports. This is because of the profound spiritual connection that people have consistently shared with horses throughout the history of Arabia. Ever since he was a child, Sheikh Hamdan has considered horseback riding to be one of his most cherished interests. It was only natural that he would develop this pastime to the point that he won a number of endurance riding championships, both internationally and regionally. The most significant worldwide accomplishments of Sheikh Hamdan won the singles competition at the World Youth Endurance Championship, which took place in Spain on September 8, 2001. As of the 27th of April in 2002, the King of Spain Endurance Cup is the winner. First place at the FEI World Endurance Championship, which took place in France in December of 2005. The team won the gold medal at the Asian Games Endurance Championship, which took place in Qatar on December 17, 2006. Gold medal for team at the FEI World Endurance Championship, held in Malaysia on November 6, 2005. 2008. Gold medal for team at the European Endurance Championship for Youth, held in Germany on August 14, 1999. At the European Open Endurance Championship, which took place in Portugal on October 2, 1999, the team won the gold medal. First place in the 140km Tattersalls Endurance Race, which took place in England on July 9, 2000. The following are some of his most notable accomplishments on the Arab community level. One first place in the 120km Wadi 
Wadi Rum International Endurance Race in Jordan won first place in the Emirates Endurance Championship, which took place in Syria on May 5, 1999. In 2008, he won first place at the 120-kilometer Qatar International Endurance Championship in Qatar. In 2008, he also won first place at the King of Bahrain Cup in Bahrain on May 5. In 2008, he tied for first place with His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum at the Syrian Endurance Championship in Syria on May 31st. Now we have talked about Prince Faza and his life, but if you want to know how his mother made the difference in his life, watch the video on the screen. Why Sheikh Hamdan's mother left him, or why that did not happen. This is what we'll be discussing in this video. Now we all know Rashid Al Maktoum. We know that despite having access to endless luxury and leading a grand lifestyle, every single wife of Sheikh Rashid Al Maktoum they have left him except Hind Al Maktoum. Now why is that? How is that even possible? Well, that's what we want to discuss more in details, guys, more in details. So, the ruler of Dubai fled, I mean all of them. The wives of ruler of Dubai, they fled except Hind Al Maktoum. And this is a story of true love. What do you think? Is this a story of true love or is this a story of severe perseverance? Like she wanted to stay here, she didn't want to leave him. What do you think about this story? Let me know. This story of the one who stayed Prince Hamdan's mother. And we will start from the very beginning. So Hind al Mahdum. She was born on the 12th of February 1962 to the royal house of al Mahdum. This royal house, they are very, very rich. If you do not know about them, they are absolutely ridiculous rich people. This whole family. And so they love doing what they're doing which is, you know, living their life and, you know, just going about their day. So her father was the son of Sheikh Juma bin al Maktoum, who was the brother of her husband's grandfather. Her mother was also from the Maktoum house. She was the daughter of her husband's grandfather. So as you can see this lady, Randa, I will talk about her in a second. But she was the daughter of her husband's grandfather, Amir Dubai. So she was royalty through and through. Growing up, she was raised with strict Islamic principles, meaning she was schooled indoors. The one you're seeing on the picture on the video is not actually Hamdan's mother. She is the nanny. But let's talk about more about this nanny and all that. Who she is, she was one of Rashid al Maktoum's wives. Some people say, no, no, she was not actually a wife. She was a mistress and all that. But this wife, Hind al Maktoum, she is a royal herself. She is a royal herself. And so when she got married into the royal family, she knew everything how to follow. So, for example, Islamic laws and all that. She was aware of all of it. So she did not have any problem. She lived pretty much an indoor life and she was happy for that. So she left the palace. If Hind longed for more, we can't really tell because she took to the training and did as she was told. So basically what this is suggestive is that she was trained well by her family, by her parents, to live a royal life in privacy and all that. When she turned 17, her good nature paid off. Sheikh Mohammed had just recently been promoted to play a higher role in the ruling of Dubai and his family, indeed. Sorry, his family needed him to be more grounded in his ways and settled down. It also did not help that he had gotten the child out of wedlock with the Lebanese wife woman, as I said, Randa. So Randa is from Lebanon. They needed him to get married to someone who respected, preferably royalty, and that was when Hind came into the picture. Guys, as I said, Hind al Maktoum was a very, very important part of his life. She brought in all kind of discipline, if you like, in his life. She brought in Islamic values, principles, that Hamdan's father, Rashid al Maktoum, would not have been able to achieve by marrying or having a mistress like Aranda al Banna. So she actually did a very good job in keeping Rashid al Maktoum out of trouble. Now, Hind had always known Sheikh Mohammed since the beginning of the 20th century. She was his maternal cousin and paternal second cousin, although it was not unusual for cousins to get married in the Arabian culture. The significant age gap between them might have made, you know, we talk about, you know, the, you know, marrying your relative, your cousin, and we sometimes frown on it. But the matter of the fact is that guys in the Arab culture, this is something very, very common. Even with the age gap thing, that is something also very, very common. I mean, nobody really cares how old are you, as long as you are able to communicate like a matured woman, like a matured man, and all those kind of things, you are good to go. So this is exactly what is happening right now with the family, because again, they have no problem, no qualm about that. Now, 
Randa Albana, even though she was not equal in age with Rashid Al Maktoum, between them might have been made it harder for her to imagine that she would be the chosen one. So when she was informed of Sheikh's intentions and agreed preparations began for the celebration of a lifetime, wedding was grander than you could ever imagine. And it was the first major, it was the first major public event for Dubai. The United Arab Emirates had recently gained independence from a British, you know, and was in control of the revenue being generated. You know the money that you see on the screen be generated from their oil wealth. So Dubai had more than enough money to splurge on the celebration. In other words, because Dubai had so much money, they didn't have any problem to spend all of this, or a lot of this money, I should say, for the wedding of Sheikh Rashid Al Maktoum. So this ordeal lasted for about five days. So the wedding was for five days in total, Rashid Al Maktoum and Hind Al Maktoum. 20,000 city stadiums were built, and you know seat was also a big enough to fit dignitaries, while the less reputable people were hosted in open spaces that had been decorated on the streets of Dubai. In other words, guys, this individual, this lady, Sheikh Hind Al Makhdoum, the mother of Sheikh Hamdan Fazar's mother, is someone who deserves to be praised because of how loyal she had been to Rashid Al Makhdoum. I mean, even though we know some of his wives fled, Princess Hamdan Hussein, for example, but she is stuck, she loves where she is, and she wants to keep it that way, not trying to change anything, not trying to rock the boat for anybody. So yeah, this is such a great achievement for Hamdan Al Maktoum. I'll be talking more about it in part two. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Leave a comment if you have any, and I will see you in the next video. And you have a wonderful day yourself. Take care.